What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's Filthiest Pitches of the Day. Before we get to those pitches, remember, hit that subscribe button. This is the biggest and best daily baseball show on YouTube, and you want to be a part of it. So hit subscribe, and without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to start with Charlie Morton, who had five strikeouts and six innings, giving up two earned runs. He had these curveballs that were over 3,100 RPMs. Morton's looking closer and closer to his normal, nasty self. He was up against Brady Singer, who looked a little further from his normal, nasty self. He did have eight Ks in five innings, but he gave up 10 hits and eight runs. Although he did have these sliders and fastball. Luis Garcia had his nasty cutter and curveball. He had seven Ks in five innings, but gave up five runs. And he faced off against Martin Perez, who had four Ks in five innings, giving up only two runs, and had this changeup and painted front door two-seamer. That was pretty. Tyler Wells had three Ks in five and a third innings and had this 87-mile-an-hour changeup. And he faced off against Mike Clevenger, who was nasty, with five Ks in six scoreless innings, giving up only one hit, thanks to these dirty sliders. Joey Wentz had seven Ks in five and two-thirds innings, giving up only one run, had these curveballs and fastball. Patrick Sandoval had these sliders and an inadvertently painted one, as well as these fastballs. And I love Yu Chang walking up to crank that from Soldier Boy. Get it? Watch me, you! As in Yu Chang. Anyway, he's still Cade. Tanner Houck had six Ks in four innings and had his wicked sliders, got a sword on it, and had this nasty two-seamer. Ty Walker had four Ks in six innings, giving up only one run and had this dirty 82-mile-an-hour slider and got a sword. Trevor Rogers had seven Ks in six innings, giving up only one run, had this changeup and elevated 94-mile-an-hour fastball. Nesta Cortez had these nasty changeups and got a sword on a breaking ball, and his fastball was up to 93 miles an hour. He had seven Ks in seven innings, giving up two runs. Nasty Nestor faced off against Louis Varland, who had eight Ks in six innings, giving up three runs. He had these change-ups, sliders, cutters, and his fastball was up to 96-97. Pretty solid outing from Varland. Eric Lauer had five Ks in six innings, giving up one run. He had this curveball, cutter, and his fastball, which he calls a zoom ball, because he likes to think of the pitch zooming by hitters. He may have a little screw loose, but he's still a good pitcher. Noah Syndergaard had nine Ks in six innings, giving up three runs. He threw 31 change-ups this game, and they were really good. He got a 50% whiff rate on them, and did a good job of keeping hitters off balance. He faced off against Justin Steele, who is one of the better sliders among starting pitchers. Steele had 8 Ks in 7 innings and had a 38% whiff rate on that slider. And as you can see, that slider's filthy. Jose Barrios had a really good outing. He had 6 Ks in 5 innings, giving up only one run. He had these beautiful change-ups and painted with this two-seamer. And had this 96-mile-an-hour fastball. Barrios has really good stuff when he puts it together. And I just hope to see more consistency out of him. He was up against Drew Rasmussen, who really didn't look like himself. He only had four Ks in four and a third innings, had these curveballs and sliders, but he struggled with command the entire game. And because he only had four Ks in four and a third innings, he cost me my parlay. I needed five. Kodai Senga had seven Ks in four and two thirds innings, thanks mostly to his ghost fork. He threw 17 ghost forks with a 67% whiff rate. Those ghost forks had a spin as little as 796 RPMs, which means it's going to drop really fast and be slightly unpredictable. His fastball this game also touched 99 miles an hour, which makes it that much harder for hitters to sit on anything. Even though this pitch was a ball, they have to respect the fastball. And he also threw this absolutely gorgeous 91 mile an hour dead zone cutter. Here's a three pitch overlay of Senga's cutter, his sweeper, and his ghost fork. And you can see how they all start out looking about the same and then head off in different directions with the ghost fork and sweeper actually switching places. This is what makes pitch tunneling so effective. As a hitter, it's basically a guess. Senga did struggle in this game, 
because he sat around a whole lot. The A's walked 17 Mets this game and threw 245 pitches in a nine-inning game. And if you're a pitching ninja watching the A's pitch, well, you want to poke your freaking eyes out. Jake Woodford had this painted slider. He had three Ks in five and a third scoreless innings, and he was up against Johan Oviedo, who was my filthiest starting pitcher of the day. Oviedo had these absolutely vicious sliders, basically unhittable stuff, had this nasty curveball, and his fastball touched 99 miles an hour this game. I did not go into yesterday thinking that Oviedo was going to be my filthiest pitcher, but you play the card you're dealt, and he was undoubtedly the filthiest starter. He had 10 Ks in seven innings, giving up only one run. Now on to my filthiest relievers. Zach Thompson had this 97-mile-an-hour paint and filthy breaking ball. Josh Winkowski got out of a crucial situation and was having such a good time pitching that he yelled out, Fun! Okay, maybe it was f- but still, he was pumped up. Matt Brash had this filth with his 98-mile-an-hour fastball, and he got a White Castle special on his slider that was up to 3,000 RPMs. Emmanuel Classe was filthy. Look at this crazy cutter movement. These things are 98 and 99 miles an hour moving like that. It's no wonder he's one of the best relievers on the planet. This isn't a reliever, but Eloy Jimenez got hit with this foul ball straight in the junk. And the White Sox crew, particularly Steve Stone, had a blast with it. Not ideal. It is a game of adjustment. It's a game of adjustments. I guess I should have said he got hit in the Steve Stone. I also love that they had that drum roll just standing by. Jordan Romano had this 97 mile an hour heat. Wandy Peralta had these filthy change ups. Will Smith had these wicked sliders. Kenley Jansen had his nasty cutters and slider. James Karinchek had these two Ks and went crazy because he's James Karinchek. That's what he does. Tyler Rogers had this fastball that was fouled off and then threw a rising slider right after it. And I did an overlay of those two pitches so you can see how much higher that slider rises than his fastball and how he sequences those two pitches. That slider literally goes one foot higher than his fastball. As a hitter, you're thinking you're swinging at something that's spinning that should drop, and instead it keeps going higher and higher because of that arm slot and release of Rogers. That is really tough. Bruce Star Gratterall had this 100-mile-an-hour two-seamer that ran Dansby off the plate and then painted with this 99-mile-an-hour two-seamer with 18 inches of run that just perfectly catches the zone. Jose Alvarado continued to have amazing stuff, 100-mile-an-hour sinkers, 95-mile-an-hour cutters. He has 16 Ks in 19 outs this year. That is a 22.7 K per nine. And his command is insane. He hasn't walked a hitter all year. Right now, he's among the most unhittable pitchers on the planet, and maybe at the top. Another one of the filthiest pitchers on the planet is Felix Bautista, and he had these 102-mile-an-hour fastballs and unbelievable splitters. Those splitters fall off the earth. His stuff is just impossible. Here's an overlay of a 102-mile-an-hour fastball with that splitter, and look how much that splitter drops. Good freaking luck. But my filthiest pitch from a reliever yesterday was this 96-mile-an-hour turbo sinker from Zach Pop. Look at this thing drop. It looks like a changeup, but it's going 96 miles an hour. Insane. And now, my Pitching Ninja moment of zen. If you watch this show daily, you know how much I love pitchers and K-struts. But check this one out from Colby Holcomb. He might have gone a little too far. I tore my groin watching this. What is up, everybody? My picks of the day today are three-leg parlay. I'm going to start off with Braxton Garrett for 5Ks or more, then take Graham Ashcraft for 5Ks or more, and top it off with Hunter Brown for 6Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be? 